Summary of Beartown by Frederick Backman In late March, one night, a teenager walks into the woods, puts a shotgun to the head of another teenager, and pulls the trigger. Early in March, everyone in the small Swedish town of Beartown is looking forward to the National Youth Hockey Tournament semi-final game tomorrow. Beartown has been getting worse for years, losing jobs, people, and even its place in the hockey standings. Now, thanks to 17-year-old star Kevin Erdahl, who is rich, their junior team has a chance to win a championship. If the team wins tomorrow, the town's economy could change in a big way. The president of Beartown's hockey club wants to fire soon, who has been the A-team coach for a long time. He wants general manager Peter Anderson to tell soon, even though Peter looks up to him. Peter grew up in Beartown, became a Canadian NHL star, and moved back there with his wife, Kara, and daughter, Maya, after their son, Isaac, died of an illness when he was young. Soon found Peter and David, who is the coach of the junior team, and helped them get better. David is taking over for Soon because the club's leaders and sponsors like the way David coaches to win, while Soon prefers to let players develop slowly and encourage them to play with heart. In particular, Soon won't put Kevin on the A-team because he doesn't think he's mature enough yet. He thinks there's more to hockey than making boys who never lose. Even Soon admits on the day before the semi-final that the Bears lack something, and that something is speed. He sees Amat, a 15-year-old boy on the boys' team, running sprints on the ice, and he tells David to think about putting Amat on the team for tomorrow's game. Amat grew up with his single mother, Fatima, in a poor part of town. Even though he is much smaller than his teammates, he is very talented. That afternoon, David asks Amat to come to practice with the juniors. Amat gets picked on by the younger juniors, and David makes him train against a big player, Bobo, in a mean way. Amat doesn't give up it though, and he gets to play in the semi-final. Kevin is in love with Maya Anderson, and Amat is in love with Maya. While Maya and her best friend, Anna, are fooling around at the rink before the game, Amat comes up to them and shyly tries to ask Maya out, but Kevin stops him and invites Maya to the party at his house that night. The Bears go on to win the semi-final in a very impressive way, which makes the whole town party loudly. Teenagers who are drunk are at Kevin's house party. Soon, Maya gets drunk with Kevin, and Kevin makes a secret bet with his friend LYT that he can sleep with the daughter of the general manager. Maya goes with Kevin to his room and kisses him, but he later rapes her. Amat, meanwhile, has gone upstairs to look for Maya. He hears sounds of fighting coming from Kevin's room, so he opens the door, sees what's going on, and stops the attack. Maya leaves the party and later gets rid of any proof that she was raped. Maya decides to tell her parents what happened the next Saturday, right before the hockey final, because Anna told her to. Just before the team leaves for the game in the capital, Kevin is arrested. Even without Kevin, the Bears fought hard, but they lost in the end. Later that night, word gets around about Maya's accusation, and most of the people in town start to hate her very much. They say that she is lying, that she wanted to sleep with Kevin, and that the accusation was made to mess up the Bears' last game on purpose. Maya is picked on and bullied by her peers, but she still wants to go to school on Monday. While this is going on, most of the hockey players get together to help Kevin, and Kevin's father, Mr. Erdahl, starts getting sponsors and other hockey club supporters to work against Peter Anderson. Mr. Erdahl talks to Amat and tells him that at Kevin's party, he didn't see what he thought he saw. In exchange for Amat's silence, he offers Amat's mom a better job and money for expensive new skates. Amat throws the money on the ground. Peter's job as general manager is up for vote at a meeting of the hockey club. Outside the rink, LYT tries to scare Amat into joining the team so he can show his support for Kevin. When Amat gets there, though, he just walks in and boldly tells everyone what he saw at the party. Ramona, who runs the Bearskin Pub and is well known in the area, convinces many people, including a group of rowdy hockey fans called The Pack, to vote for Peter so he doesn't lose his job as general manager. Later, it comes out that David has given notice and will move to the nearby city of Head to coach the better funded professional team there. He will take many of Beartown's best junior players with him. Soon will stay in Beartown and continue to coach the A team. Amat's teammates beat him up for not being loyal and they also beat up Bobo, who has become Amat's friend and defends him at the last minute. A member of the pack who was watching stops the fighting and gives the money Amat dropped back to him. 
Amat buys Maya a new guitar with the money he got later. The case against Kevin for rape is dropped because there isn't enough evidence, or so they say. Soon after that, Maya steals a shotgun from Anna's dad and catches Kevin by surprise while he's out jogging. She puts the gun to Kevin's head and makes him think she's going to kill him, even though the gun isn't loaded. She feels some sense of justice in knowing that Kevin will always be afraid of the dark, just like her. After the season is over, Soon helps start a girls' hockey team in Beartown. This is the first step in changing the town's sexist attitude toward hockey. Some of the people who stayed in Beartown, like Amat and Bobo, helped teach the little kids. One of these kids, a four-year-old girl from an abusive home, will find safety on the ice and become the best hockey player Beartown has ever seen. About the author. Frederick Backman grew up in Helsingborg, Sweden, a suburb of Stockholm. His first book, A Man Called Ove, was based on things he wrote on his blog for the Swedish magazine Café. Even though many publishers turned it down at first, it quickly became a worldwide hit and was made into a movie in 2015. Backman had dropped out of college and was working as a forklift driver in a warehouse at night. During the day, he wrote. At the time the book came out, he was writing it. His other books are My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry, Brit Marie Was Here, and Things My Son Needs to Know About the World, which is a non-fiction book. Backman has two kids with his wife, Nada. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.